भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम इलेवेंथ कैंटो सेकेंड चैप्टर टेक्स्ट फोर्टी फोर श्रीराज उवाच तत भागवत ब्रूत यदर्मो यादृश नृण यथाचरती यदूते यर्लिंगे भगवत प्रिय श्रीराज उवाच अथ भागवत ब्रूत यदर्मो यादृश नृण यथाचरती यदूते यर्लिंगे भगवत प्रिय श्रीराज उवाच अथ भागवत ब्रूत यदर्मो यादृश नृण यथाचरती यदूते यैलिंगेर्भगवत प्रिय श्रीराज उवाच भागवत ब्रूत यदर्मयादृश नृण यथाचरती यदूते यर्लिंगे भगवत प्रिय श्रीराज उवाच अथ भागवत ब्रूता यदर्मो यदृश नृण यथाचरित यदूते यर्लिंगे भगवत प्रिय श्रीराज उवाच अथ भागवत ब्रूत यदर्मो यादृश नृण यथाचरती यदूते यर्लिंगे भगवत प्रिय माताजी वर्ड बाय वर्ड मीनिंग श्री राज उवाच द किंग स्पोक अथ नेक्स्ट भागवतम अबाउट द डिवोटी ऑफ द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड ब्रूत प्लीज टेल मी यदर्म हैविंग वॉट ड्यूटीज यदृश हैविंग वॉट नेचर नृणाम एमंग मेन यथा हौ आचरति ही बिहेव्स यत वॉट ब्रूते ही स्पीक्स यही बाय विच लिंग विधिबल सिम्टम्स भगवत प्रिय is known as the dear to the supreme lord translation and purport by beloved disciples of shila bhakti vedanta swami prabhupad translation maharaj nimi said no please tell me in greater detail about the devotees of the supreme lord what are the natural symptoms by which i can distinguish between the most advanced devotees those on the middle level and those who are neophytes what are the typical religious activities of a vaishnava and how does he speak specifically please describe those symptoms and characteristics by which vaishnavas become dear to the supreme personality of godhead 
purport. The great sage Kavi has informed King Nimi about the general external symptoms of a devotee of the Lord, namely his appearance, personal qualities and activities. But now King Nimi asks how to make further distinctions among the servants of the Supreme Personality of Godhead so that the first class, second class and lower class Vaishnavas can clearly be identified. According to Srila Rupa Goswami, Krishneti Yasya Giri Tam Manasa Adriyat One should mentally honor any devotee who chants the holy name of Lord Krishna. Upadesha Amrut 5 Any living entity who is faithfully chanting the holy name of Krishna is to be considered a Vaishnava and at least within the mind is to be offered respect. But for practical advancement in Krishna consciousness, one should associate at least with a second class devotee. And if one can receive the mercy of a first class devotee of the Lord, one's perfection is very easily guaranteed. Thus Nimi Maharaj is humbly inquiring what are the character, behavior and speech of devotees. The king wants to know the particular symptoms of body, mind and speech by which the different categories Uttama Adhikari, Madhyama Adhikari and Kanishta Adhikari are clearly identified. In response to the king's inquiry, another of the Navayogendras, namely Havir, will give a further elaboration of the science of Krishna consciousness. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupaha Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gudun Vaishnavascha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamsha हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमामी हरि प्रिय वांचा कल्पतरु व्यस्य कृपा सिंधु व्ययवच पतितानाम पावने भ्यो वैष्णवे भ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्या प्रभु नित्यानंदा श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासदी गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Krishna. So at the very outset, I would like to seek the blessings of all exalted Vaishnavas sitting in this hall and also those who are trying to hear the class on the internet. I seek everybody's blessings. So Srimad Bhagavatam is actually a treasure house of transcendental knowledge which comes to us in the form of questions asked by ardent you know, seekers and questions which are answered by Mahabhagavats, Uttam Adhikaris. So we have thus seen over the last few years also that the Bhagavatam begins with Parikshit Maharaj asking questions to Srila Sukhdev Goswami. Then thereafter we have Sutta Goswami answering questions of sages of Naimisharanya. 
then we have maitre muni answering questions of vidura then we have narad muni answering questions of yudhishthir maharaj and in the present case also answering questions of vasudev and now we also have later on we will have uddhava asking questions and that those questions will be answered by none other than supreme lord himself and they will manifest in the form of uddhav gita so this way we find that this this shrimad bhagavatam is a treasure house of transcendental knowledge very very authentic because it comes the knowledge comes from you know bona fide you know uh, devotees pure devotees of the lord and therefore it is very very valuable so we now have maharaj nimi asking questions of the navayogendras who are the navayogendras one is kavi the second one is havir the third one is antariksh the fourth one is prabuddha then pippalayana avirhotra drumila chamasa and karabhajan rishi so to us vaishnava they are all very very valuable names because we'll be hearing about karabhajan rishi later on also in the shrimad bhagavatam so it's important to note that the navayogendras these are paramahamsa devotees were the sons of uh, actually uh, uh, that uh, sons of lord rishabhdev and they are moving about everywhere in the universe giving transcendental knowledge to seekers and in this particular case it is not as if lord uh, king nimi invited the navayogendras to his kingdom no they just came of their own volition they came and they presented themselves they were dressed in all directions huh? they were digambaras they dressed in all directions very very pure very very resplendent it is said that they were surya sankash that means who rival the sun in brilliance that was their effulgence that was those these are the navayogendras who descended practically huh? they descended upon the uh what do you call um, the sacrificial performance of uh, nimi lord of king nimi so they came on their own so it is described that when these very very wonderful pure devotees of the lord appeared there in his kingdom king nimi offered them wonderful worship he every one he worship they he offered them proper asanas offered them wonderful worship and it is described that he worshiped him as if he was worshiping the supreme personality of god it so this is what is intended to be done when we have such exalted devotees in our house we are supposed to worship them with the same spirit as we would worship the supreme personality of god it so the king nimi nimi is overwhelmed by the presence of these exalted souls in his kingdom and then after some time he starts asking questions so he addresses questions he addresses actually nine questions and each of these questions is answered by one yogendra hmm? so thus we find that in response to the first question which is atah atyanti kshemam pruchhamo bhakto anagaha he says oh purified ones who oh are pure devotees of the lord sinful who are free from all sins so i wish to ask you what is the supreme goal of life this is one question that was asked by king nimi and this question is addressed to everyone but the question was first answered by the first yogendra navayogendra that is uh, king kavi kavi sorry kavi is the one who answers the question so last few sessions last few classes we have had speakers after speakers sitting here on the vyasasan and giving us beautiful you know narrations about what was you know said by by kavi and what were the various uh, spiritual truths that were revealed to king nimi i have tried to briefly summarize what was discussed by them for the sake of continuity so the essence of what we heard over the last couple of weeks is that one can achieve freedom from fear only be only by worshiping the lotus feet of the supreme lord so this is the first conclusion and yesterday radha vallabh prabhu spoke about this he said that how in the heart of his hearts you know vasudev you know had a little bit of fear and 
So he begins his answer, you know, the Navayogendra begins his answer by talking about fear. The fear will be dispelled by uh, worshipping the lotus feet of uh, the Supreme Lord. Bhaja ure mana, sinanda nandana, abhaya charana aravindare. We hear it in a song. So by worshipping that. So abhaya, we get that. Then, second one is that even ignorant living entities can very easily come to know the Supreme Lord by adopting what? Bhagavad Dharma. Even ignorant people. Hmm? So, one can, this is prescribed, Bhagavad Dharma is prescribed by Lord Himself. And then third, one who accepts the process will never blunder hmm, on his path, even while running with his eyes closed. So, this is a great assurance. Huh? So, even with eyes closed, he will not trip and fall. Hmm? Even with, he will get, you know, proper spiritual nourishment. So, and then fourth one, conclusion, whatever one does with body, words, mind, senses, hmm? huh? intelligence or, or purified consciousness, one should offer it to Lord Narayan. Hmm? So, Kayena Vacha Manasa, this is a very popular verse. Everything one should offer to Lord Narayan. Then the fifth essence was that one should hear and chant the holy names of the Lord constantly. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. What will be the consequence of this process of chanting the holy names? The process will be that one will be endowed with love of God. So this is being reiterated here. Then one comes to the stage of love of God by the process of chanting of holy names. Then it can so happen that the devotee who has made progress, what would he do? Hasati, huh? Hasati yathe rodhiti rauti gayati unmadavat rutyati. Hmm? So, such a devotee who has reached the highest realm of love of Godhead, he may, you know, be constantly be crying, you know, he may be screaming out because he is constantly in love of God. He may dance, he may do so many things. As actually, these symptoms were manifested by none other than Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself when he received the Harinam Diksha from his Guru Ishwar Puri. So he did precisely the same thing and he described these symptoms to Prakashanand Saraswati and so many, you know, uh, rishis, uh, so, so many uh, people sitting there and he transformed them by the power of his love. So this is, this is what is there. Then the other symptom is supreme goal is love of Godhead, that is Krishna Prem. And what does the practitioner of Bhagavad Dharma gain? He gains Bhakti, Pareshanubhava and Virakti. He gains devotion, direct experience of the Supreme Lord and detachment from, from other things. So these three sim symptoms occur simultaneously. And then the example analogy is given is that of a very hungry man who is very hungry and when he gets some relishable prasad to honor, you know, simultaneously his, his hunger, you know, is quenched and, you know, he's, he's, he's fully satisfied, he's very, very happy receiving that. And this way, and with each bite, you know, uh, he becomes better and better. So, <laughs> this is something which is to be experienced and some of us would have definitely experienced it in our lives. So, a devotee engaged, finally, a devotee engaged in Bhagavad Dharma achieves supreme spiritual peace. This was elaborated yesterday huh, uh, by uh, Radha Vallabh Prabhu. So this is in summary of, of whatever things we have heard over the last few weeks. And in today's verse, what is being asked? This is the second question that is being asked. And the second question is, what are the religious principles, hmm, dharma? And what are the material proclivities, swabhava, achara, acharya, sorry, achara, vakya, lakshana of a Bhagavad devotee? So this is the second question, this is being addre addressed by Nimi to the Nava Yogendras and this question will be answered elaborately by Yogendra Havir, this is the second Yogendra. So in weeks to come, we will get to read and we will get to hear about the answer that has been provided by Havir. So what about today? So, so in today's class, I would like to briefly discuss with uh, about Vaishnavas, because that is what is the subject matter here. And the, since there is a reference to Nectar of Instruction, Rupa Goswami is Nectar of Instruction, so I would also like to discuss that and also some, what are the features of Vaishnavas. So, 
we hear, we read from uh, Nectar of Instruction, Dadati Pratigannati, hmm? Guhyam Akhyati Prachyati, Bhunjate Bhungte Chayuva, Shadavida Preeti Lakshanam. So what are the symptoms of love uh, which are exhibited by the devotees? So in this case it is said, uh, offering gifts, hmm? offering gifts in charity, accepting charitable gifts, uh, revealing one's mind in confidence, inquiring confidentially, accepting prasad and offering prasad. These are Preeti Lakshana, these are the symptoms of love. So then the question may arise in our mind and that, you know, who are the people, with whom should we do what? To whom should we offer prasad? With whom should we discuss our innermost secrets? Guyam Akyati Prachati. That question may arise. And therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami himself, you know, answers this question in the next shloka to which a reference is made in today's purport. Says, Krishneti Yasya Giritam Manasa Adriyat. That is what is mentioned in the purport. Diksha Asti Chet Pranati Bhirtam Bhajatam Isham. Shushrushaya Bhajana Vidyam Ananyam Anya Nindandi Shunya Rudam Ipsita Sangha Labdha. So it is mentioned in the nectar of instruction that we have to deal with three types of devotees. One is Kanishta Adhikari which is mentioned here. The second one is Madhyama Adhikari and the third one is Uttama Adhikari. It's like good, better, best. Huh? So everyone is good. No, nobody is below the rank of good. So good, better, best. So the Kanishta Adhikari is a neophyte who has received the Harinam initiation, who is chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So what should one do? In this case, it is mentioned in the purport, Manasa Adriyat. So one must, you know, honor such a person who is chanting the holy names in our, at least in our mind. So this should be our consciousness while dealing with a Kanishta Adhikari who is not very advanced. He still has many blemishes. After all, we don't advance in Krishna consciousness in a ziffy, you know. It takes years and years of training under a spiritual master. Tadviddhi pranipate na pariprashne na sevaya. So it requires, it's a long drawn process and we cannot hope, it's not like a push button thing that you know, yesterday I was an ordinary person, now you know I have surrendered and today button has been pressed and now I am a pure deity. You no, know, it takes years and years. So we, we might end up being Kanishta Adhikaris for several years, though we may not know it ourselves. So we could still be Kanishta Adhikaris in our consciousness. So it's all a matter of consciousness. So that is how it is. So one should one should manasa adriyat, respect such a person within one's mind as Kanishta Adhikari or a Kanishta Vaishnava. The, adhyam, the Madhyam Adhikari has received spiritual initiation from the spiritual master and is fully engaged by him in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. This is Madhyam Adhikari. So Madhyam Adhikari is an intermediate. In fact, he is our closest connection to the Lord. Because the Uttam Adhikari may be so exalted Though we can take shelter of him and we should take shelter of him, we may not be in a position to interact with him so much. But with Madhyam Adhikari, who is very close to being Uttam Adhikari or who is endeavouring to be Uttam Adhikari, we can certainly take his shelter and take his suggestions, take his advice. So we can associate with him. So the Madhyam Adhikari should be considered to be situated midway in devotional service. The Uttam Adhikari or the highest devotee is one who is very advanced in devotional service and Uttam Adhikari is not, he's not interested in blaspheming <laughs> others or criticizing others. His heart is completely pure, he's clean hmm? and he has attained the realized state of unalloyed Krishna consciousness. That is Uttam Adhikari. That is our aspiration. So that is our aspiration. So we should take that. So according to Srila Rupa Goswami, the association hmm, and Service, such a Mahabhagavat, Uttam Adhikari, is, is most desirable. So that's very, very important that we take shelter of that. And then, there are also Prakrita Bhaktas. So, Archayama eva haraye pujam yaha shraddhaya ihate natat bhakteshu cha anyeshu saha bhaktaha prakrutaha smrtaha. So, a devotee who faithfully engages hmm, in the worship of deity in the temple, but does not behave properly towards others. So even if we may be on the platform of devotional service, how, what our achar is going to be, that is very, very important. So a person, a devotee who is 
in the process, but whose behavior is not correct. Such a devotee is referred to by Rupa Goswami as Prakrita Bhakta. So he is a Prakrita Bhakta. So in other words, Kanishta Adhikari. So one should not remain, Rupa Goswami advised, one should not remain on the platform of Kanishta Adhikari. One should constantly be endeavoring to raise oneself, either by associating with Madhya Madhikari, and if one is fortunate taking shelter of an Uttam Adhikari, we should constantly be trying to elevate ourselves. And never ever think that we have made the grade, you know. So there is always a possibility that in deep within our consciousness, we may still not have attained that purity. Though we may have spent several years in Krishna consciousness, we, it, we still could be at a, at a very lower level of consciousness. There may be various grades in that, so it could be in that. So, just as, you know, uh, the Madhyamadhikari is a devotee, who worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the highest object of love, makes friends with Lord's devotees, is merciful to the ignorant and avoids those who are envious by nature. So these are the characteristics of a Madhya Madhikari. Most important thing is that we should avoid the association of envious people. No harm is done if you associate with those who are not yet on the platform of devotion, but still, definite harm will be done when we associate with envious people. So, we are cautioned against that. So, we find that even in human society, there are different types of people hmm, with different consciousness. I remember when, we, when I was uh, very young, we, uh, we had heard a Subhashitam. It's not exactly relevant to what I am speaking, but nevertheless, I'll quote it. It's Pinde Pinde Matir Bhinna Kunde Kunde Navampayaha Jato Jato Navacharaha Navavani Mukhe Mukhe. It says that Subhashitam is very interesting. It says that Pinde Pinde Matir Bhinna, which means that no two minds you know, are alike. We sometimes say he just like that, his thinking is just like that, but it cannot be. Pinde Pinde Matir Bhinna, Kunde Kunde Navampayaha. So in every well, you know, there is water, but the water of one well doesn't taste like the water of the other well. There are distinctions. There is a difference in taste. Jato jato navacharaha. Different cars, different communities. There are so many rudies and so many, you know, things which, they are all different. So in India especially, we find there's so many, such diversity in this. Navavani mukhe mukhe. Hmm? So, nobody's voice is like somebody else's voice. My voice will not be like any one of you sitting here. Huh? My voice will be distinctive. So everybody, navavani mukhe mukhe. So this way there is diversity in God's creation. Hmm? Though everybody may be endowed with the same type of limbs, eyes, ears, everything, still there is such diversity. Now similarly when we take to the spiritual path, huh, when we try to become Vaishnavas, we have our inherent nature and we may be at different levels. And therefore there are different grades, just as we have Kanishta and Madhyama and Uttam Adhikari. Similarly, we have, we have Kanishta Vaishnava, we have Madhyama Vaishnava, we have Uttama Vaishnava. So, some discussion about this, though His Grace Baldev Prabhu did deal with this to, to some extent, um, at the cost of uh, being repetitive, I'll still like to talk about it because this is the subject matter of my purport at least. So, who is a Vaishnava? Hmm? So, this is, the, this is the question that needs to be answered. So, there was, uh, there was a devotee called Lakshminath Vasu. Hmm? Later on came to be known as Satyaraj Khan, hmm? the resident of Kulina, huh? that place, Kulina Gram Vasi. He was the son of a, another Param Vaishnava called Maladhar Vasu, who also became Gunaraj Khan. You may be wondering, you know, how this word Khan comes to this was an honor bestowed upon by the ruling people. Just like, you know, in India also, the Britishers used to confer some honors, Rao Bahadur, so and so, you know. And when the government or the king honors you, you just, you don't refuse it. So these names stuck. So Satyaraj Khan is the son of actually Gunaraj Khan and Srila Prabhupada writes in Chaitanya Charitamrut that Srila Gunaraj Khan was a very exalted Vaishnava, hmm? and he translated, Prabhupada writes, translated the 10th and 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam for the common people of the world. Such an exalted personality. Hmm? So, and for the understanding of common man. 
So he also wrote a book called Shri Krishna Vijaya, which was really praised by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, none other than Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So these are Kulina Gram verses. And Satyaraj, you know, this is also in the nectar of instruction, this verse. So Satyaraj Khan asks Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu a question. He says, Grahasta Vishayami Kimora Sadhane Shri Muke Adnyakar Prabhu Nivedi Charane so he says that, my dear Lord, being a householder and a materialistic, Vishayi, he calls himself Vishayi. That is how devotees who are pure, they evaluate themselves, they call themselves Vishayi. They don't say that, you know, I am an exalted devotee, on my way to becoming a pure devotee, I am, you know, 25% pure devotee. They don't say, they say, I am Vishayi, you know, I am still interested in materialistic things. So I am a Vishayi and he says that, I do not know the process of advancing in spiritual life. He is advancing in spiritual life, but he says, I do not know the process. <coughs> I therefore submit myself unto you, into your lotus feet, and I would like to know, hmm, you. I would like you to order me as to what I should do. Because many times it can happen that a disciple may not know what exactly to do, though he has taken shelter of the Guru. So Guru, he, he expects the Guru to tell him that also. So he is asking Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what should I do? Then what does Lord Chaitanya reply? He says, Prabhu kahena Krishna seva Vaishnava sevan nirantara kar Krishna nama sankirtan. So this is the advice given by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, without cessation, without stopping, hmm? continue chanting the name of Lord Krishna. Whenever possible, <coughs> serve him and his devotees, the Vaishnavas. So Satyaraj Khan, you know, has a natural question. He said that you serve the Vaishnavas, but he has a curiosity. He says that, Satyaraj Bale Vaishnava Kiniba Kemane Ke Vaishnava Kahatar Samanya Lakshane So he asked Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you said Vaishnavas. All right, I accept that I will serve the Vaishnavas. But who are the Vaishnavas, you know? What are their symptoms? So they asked Lord Chaitanya, he asked Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. At that time, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this is given in Madhya Lila, 15th chapter. Prabhu kahe yara muke shuni ek bar krishna nama sehi pujya shreshta sabakar. He says that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, whoever chants the holy name of Krishna just once is worshipable and is the topmost human being. So the question is answered this way, that even once he types, chants Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Ek Krishna nama kare sarva papakshay navavidha bhakti purna nama hai te hai. He says that the holy name Hare Krishna Mahamantra is endowed with such potency that whatever, you know, progress we hope to make by navavidha bhakti, all that is contained, is, is capsulated in uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So that is the advice that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave. Atta eva yara mukhe ek krishna naam seita vaishnava kari hatahara samman. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tells him that one who is chanting the Hare Krishna Mantra is understood to be a Vaishnava and therefore you should offer all respect to him. So this is a reply in answer, this is an answer. In the, to the question that has been asked by Satyaraj Khan. So the Kulina Gramvasis were in the habit of asking questions to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it seems, because once again the same subject is raised. Kulina Grami Purvavat Kailani Vedan Prabhu Adnyakara Amar Kartavya Sadhan. So one of the Kulina Vasis, not specified who, he asked again, he said that, My Lord, kindly tell me what my duty is and how I should execute it. Now, when I was reading this, you know, I, I was reminded of uh, our exalted Anand Vrindavan Prabhu, who, you know, asked sometime, Radhanath Maharaj once said that he asked the same question in so many different ways that it is impossible not to be, not to, you know, respond to him. The question content may be the same, but he asked in different ways. So, similarly, these, of course, they are not we are asking questions which are fundamental. He is asking that, my Lord, kindly tell me what my duty is and how I should execute it. So, 
लॉर्ड चैतन्य महाप्रभु से प्रभु कहे वैष्णव सेवा नाम संकीर्तन दुई कर शीघ्र पाबे श्री कृष्ण चरण वेरी ब्यूटिफुली ही टेल्स हिम चैतन्य महाप्रभु से वैष्णव सेवा एंड नाम संकीर्तन these two things you should do this is an instruction for all of us do it is meant for kulina gramis duikar rashigra pabe shri krishna charan so if you want to attain the lotus feet of lord krishna you must do these two things one is vaishnava seva then nama sankirtan so this is what we are advised also ha huh? vaishnava seva name ruchi isn't it hmm? so this is these two things are definitely required so the lord replies this way If you do these two things, very soon, very soon you will attain shelter and Krishna's lotus feet. Once again, the Kulina Gramis they ask the question. You said that we should, you know, respect the Vaishnavas. Who are these Vaishnavas? What are their characteristics? The same thing will be discussed now in the next couple of lectures. Also, you will hear, keep hearing this. So. तेहो कहे के वैष्णव किम तार लक्षण तबे हासी कहे प्रभु जानी तार मन तो वन से कहते आस प्लीज लेट मी नो हु इज एक्चुअली अ वैष्णव एंड व्हाट इज सिम्टम्स आर द सेम क्वेश्चन इज आल्सो आस्क बाय अर्जुन टू कृष्ण व्हाट आर द लक्षण ऑफ अ स्थित प्रज्ञा दैट इज इन भगवत गीता आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू इट बट दैट इज अ नेचुरल प्रोपेंसिटी ऑफ अ सीकर टू आस्क या यू आर सेड दैट यू रीच दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टेज But how do you recognize that stage? What are the symptoms? Arjuna also asks similar question. Here also the same question is being asked by devotees. So, what are the symptoms, sir? So, understanding his mind, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu smiled and gave the following reply. And what are the reply? Krishna nama nirantara yahara vadane sehi vishnu vishreshta bhaja tahara charane. So a person who is always chanting the holy name of the Lord is to be considered a first-class Vaishnava. He is to be considered as a first-class Vaishnava, and your duty is to serve his lotus feet. So these are specific instructions which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving to the Kulina Grami Vasis. So a person who is always chanting the holy name is constantly chanting the holy name. Such a person is to be considered as a first-class Vaishnava. He is chanting in a In a pure way, pure fashion, not just chanting, but chanting. That is what is implied in this. Then, is this the end of the discussion? No. Varshantare puna asiche prashna kaila vaishnave rataratamya prabhu shika ila. The following year, the inhabitants of Kulinagram again asked the Lord hmm, the same question. No, is it that they want to harass Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? One may think like that again and again the same question repetitively. Why? No, it's not that. It is just their burning desire to make progress in their Krishna consciousness that is making them ask the questions again and again. And also possibly the audience is different every time, so it is for the benefit of everyone. So repetition in Krishna consciousness is welcomed. Huh? it is definitely welcome because you know if it is if there is no repetition you know within no time you know everything will evaporate from our consciousness so repetition is very very healthy shri prabhupada used to say that repetition is required so here also there is repetition so <clears throat> shri chaitanya mahaprabhu replies yahara darshane mukhe aai se krishna naam Tahare jani ha tu mi Vaishnava pradhan. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, a first class Vaishnava is he whose very presence makes others chant the holy name of Krishna. So now we have the highest grade. Hmm? His very presence makes one chant, and that is the highest uttama adhikari. This way there is different gradation hmm? that is given. So. Such a Mahabhagavat Vaishnava has the transcendental eyes to see who is sleeping. Prabhupada writes in his purport, who is sleeping under the spell of Maya, and he engages himself in awakening huh? the sleeping conditioned being by spreading the knowledge of Krishna consciousness. Jiva jago, jiva jago. So, such a exalted personality who, out of his compassion, awakens the sleeping souls. 
is a Mahabhagavat, this is mentioned. So, there is a verse in uh, Madhya Lila which says, Loha ke avat parshi he mana hi kare, tavas parsha mani ke ha chini te na pare. So, one cannot understand the value or the importance hmm, of a touchstone until it turns iron into gold. A touchstone is a touchstone if only it can convert iron into gold. Hmm? So, this is, this is how we have to understand an Uttama Dikari. An Uttama Dikari is not one who, is, who transforms somebody who is already devotionally inclined. Usko liya, usko kya bolte hai, training thoda diya and convert him into no. An Uttama Dikari is the one who transforms a worldly person, you know. One who has got, you know, worldly traits, he transforms him into a devotee. That is the Lakshana. Just as a touchstone transforms, you know, uh, iron into gold. That is the symptom. If it transforms uh, iron into copper or silver, that is not a touchstone. Hmm? It has <laughs> transformed into gold. That's a touchstone. So similarly, a Mahabhagavat and Uttam Adhikari has this intrinsic ability and capacity to transform worldly people like us, you know, into devotee, devotee material. That is the characteristic of a, a Mahabhagavat. So, a, what, what is the Mahabhagavat thinking? He thinks that every living being is after all a part and parcel of Krishna. Mamai Vamsya Jeeva Loke Jeeva Bhuta Sanatana. So every living entity is potentially he can be Krishna conscious, Krishna conscious. And this is actually the compassion of the Uttam Adhikari. The Madhyam Adhikari also has compassion. He also can preach and transform people. But the Uttam Adhikari's compassion is that he wants, he recognizes that all, he sees, he has that Samanata in his vision. He sees everyone as, you know, part and parcel of Krishna. So he wants to give Krishna consciousness to everyone, hmm? every person. Hmm? So we see this trait in our Param Guru, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Hmm? He was living a very peaceful life in Radha Damodar temple in Vrindavan, isn't it? Very peaceful, respected by everyone, honored by everyone. He had written, you know, three volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam, they were ready. Very peaceful, placid life. But what, what was Prabhupada's feeling? He wanted to, of course, respect and honor his spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur's order. So he had to go abroad, he had to go to America. But his main desire, you know, was to transform highly materialistic people you know, to, into devotees who would chant the holy names of the Lord. So this is what he did. Huh? His Srila Prabhupada was like a touchstone huh? who converted not iron into gold, he converted entirely materialistic people who were addicted to all kinds of wrong habits, all kinds of wrong things they were doing. But Srila Prabhupada saw in them the capacities, saw in them that they are part and parcel of Krishna. Ausha of Krishna. Therefore, they have the potential to become devotee. This is what Srila Prabhupada saw in everyone, all the hippies and everyone else who was around. He saw that potential in them and then, like a touchstone, he transformed all of them. We read, you know, how once, you know, Srila Prabhupada asked his uh, very senior disciples, he was giving his lecture in the 26th Avenue, he was sitting in the storefront and he was giving a class to people, devotees. And then suddenly, you know, he called his senior most disciples, said that, you know, see that fellow <laughs> drunkard, you know, who is walking on the pavement, hmm? he's tottering, he's not able to balance himself, catch hold of him and bring him here. So, I think it was Brahmanand Prabhu, if I mistake, I'm not very authoritative in these matters, but I think it was Brahmanand Prabhu. So, Brahmanand Prabhu and others said, Prabhupada, he hardly can balance himself. Uh, what will he hear of the class? Prabhupada said, bring him. Even if he doesn't hear, his soul will hear. So bring him. So that man was brought. So Prabhupada recognized this in everyone. We also have that famous example of a uh, drunkard tottering, you know, and coming inside when the class is going on, he enters, Prabhupada is giving a class, that person enters the classroom, and then he has brought, you know, some 
roll of uh, toilet paper and that toilet paper he goes and fixes in the bathroom then again totters out goes out so prabhupada said see even this person has the desire to serve jivera swarupa hoy krishnera nitya das everybody wants to serve somebody so even he has that propensity so shila prabhupada had that you know capacity to you know transform lives and he did transform all these lives so having you know equal vision so we have in a bhagavad gita i think i'll conclude with that if you don't mind i still have some time i hope so in bhagavad gita there is a very beautiful verse vidya vinaya sampanne brahmane gavihastine sunichaiva sapake cha pandita samadarshinah so the word pandita is used in this a uh, particular verse uh, krishna uses the word pandita now who is a pandita here he is not one who has got a phd delit or you know some bharat ratna or some such honor no he is referring to a person who has equal vision he sees the spirit soul in every living entity with the same vision he says so whom he says the humble sage by virtue of true knowledge sees with equal vision a learned and a gentle brahmana a cow an elephant a drug and a dog eater an outcast he sees all of them with the same vision hmm? he is a pandita not somebody who is learned in the conventional sense hmm? not that so he sees perceives the presence of supreme personality of godhead in every living entity now this a madhyam adhi adhikari may or may not be able to do i may be corrected if i am wrong may also be able to do but basically the uttam adhikari can see this so he can see the spark and he can convert the spark into a blaze you know of krishna consciousness so that is uttam adhikari's achievement so that is what he does so he says everything as hari sambandha vastuna so we have a very apt you know uh, narration in shrimad bhagavatam which fits this particular verse and that story is of none other than ranti dev so i'll conclude with the, that uh, brief narration ranti dev so in the ninth canto of shrimad bhagavatam there is this story of king ranti dev now this king ranti dev he fasted for 48 days continuously 48 days fasting no when i think of <laughs> nirjala ekadashi one day fast you know we think so much we make such a big fuss 48 days he fasted for the welfare of his subjects he fasted and after fasting for 48 days you know uh, somebody you know somebody sent him you know food stuffs made with milk and ghee and sent him some water to drink and he received all of that and just uh, as run, uh, just uh, when he wanted to you know honor prasad with his family members sitting next to him he wanted to honor prasadam what happened just then a a person came there huh? and he a guest came and who was that guest he was a chandala oh sorry he was a brahmana a brahmana came there and he said that i am very hungry i should be honored i should I, i please give me some food so whatever food he had received he gave a share of it to that brahmana and because why because ranti dev perceived the presence of the supreme god everywhere and in every living entity so he received the guest with faith and respect and gave him a share of his food so the brahmana guest was very happy he ate it and he left so afterwards whatever food was left he divided it for himself and all his family members he gave the food to them and then he also kept slice of food for himself also hmm? just then a shudra arrived there hmm? the shudra arrived there and when he saw the shudra he saw his relationship with the supreme personality of god he didn't <coughs> he didn't see him sorry he didn't see him as a shudra at all he saw him as a human being who has relationship with the supreme lord so the lord does not make any distinction between brahmana or shudra 
and nor did Ranti Dev. Ranti Dev also did not discriminate between Brahman and Shudra. So he gave him a portion of the food which, which he had kept for himself. The family members ate whatever was their share, but he kept a portion of the food, he gave it to the Shudra. So when Shudra went away, another guest arrived. So some, only some prasad now is left, very little prasad is left for him. And he, that person came and he was not alone, he was accompanied by dogs. So he had several dogs with him. So, O oh king, I and my company of dogs are very hungry. Please give us something to eat. So, what did Rantidev do? So, with great respect, Rantidev offered the balance of food to the dogs and the master of the dogs. Both of them received the, whatever food was there in his share that was offered to them. And with great respect and paying obeisances, he offered this food. It is, it is not just a matter of, you know, just gay, lay. That was not the attitude, you know. It, it is, sometimes, you know, we have this tendency of, you know, throwing coins, you know. I, so we do this. So there is, there is no element of, you know, any love or compassion in it. It is just, you know, we are doing it to show off our, you know, ability to give. So that is not the attitude or consciousness with which Rantidev was offering. He was offering it to another living entity with love and respect and with paying obeisances. That is how he offered. So then what was left? What was left for Rantidev? He was now virtually on the threshold of dying. He was hungry. He, all that was left was paniyam, little, little water was all that was left for him. And maybe that would have helped him, you know, to save his life. So he wanted to, just about to drink that water. Then when what happened? Hmm? When he wanted to drink water, a chandala appeared there. Now, a chandala when he appeared there, he said that, you know, I am dying of thirst. So please give me water to drink. So that was the only thing which was, uh, <laughs> which made the difference between life and death as far as the king was concerned. But when he saw this Chandala, you know, suffering, hmm, so he aggrieved at hearing the pitiable words of the uh, poor, fatigued Chandal. Maharaj Rantidev spoke the following nectarian words. So, Srila Prabhupada makes uh, a beautiful comment. He says, it is not just how, what you give, but how you give. So, with what words do you give? With what words do you welcome a guest? With what words, you know, do you serve the guest? These are all very, very important. So, Rantidev said to that Chandala, he said to himself and to the Chandala, he said, I do not pray to the Supreme Personality of Godhead for eight perfections. I don't want Ashta Siddhis, no? of mystic yoga. Nor do I want salvation hmm? from repeated birth and death. I don't need, I don't want Mukti. I want to stay among all the living entities and suffer all the distresses on their behalf, so that they may be freed from suffering. So, Srila Prabhupada, in his comment in the Srimad Bhagavatam, he writes, he says that the mood of Rantidev is exactly matching the mood of Vasudeva Dutt. Hmm? Huh? Who, who said that, you know, I don't mind, you know, languishing in hell eternally. If I can take, if I can suffer for the sins of others, let them, you know, get mukti. Let me take the sins of everyone. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sheds tears. He sheds tears. He says that, oh Vasudev, how great you are, you know. He says that, you know, you, you are not an ordinary person. You are Prahlad himself. Therefore, you have this compassion in your heart. Therefore, you know, you want to save everyone. So, Rantidev had in a similar, you know, mood. He says that, you know, I don't mind taking on the sufferings of everyone. And thus saying, you know, sweetly talking to that Chandala, he offers him his share of water, which would have saved his life. He offers him, and just when that water is being offered, all these people, you know, Brahmana, and the dog, the Chandala, they manifest the true forms. They are all demigods who have come to test Rantidev. They all come to test Rantidev. And the demigods, you know, tell him, Ask whatever you want. We are very pleased. We are very pleased by your consciousness, by your, you know, charitable disposition. Ask whatever you want. Sky is the limit, as they say. You ask anything that you want. But 
He don't ask anything, material things. Because he had taken shelter of the Supreme Lord, Vishnu. He wants to take, he wants to take shelter of the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. So he doesn't ask him anything material. The Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport that everyone present there in the audience, who, all, all those who were there, they all, you know, took the same path that Rantidev, you know, traversed. In other words, they also developed the same type of consciousness. So this is the lesson that we learn from uh, Rantidev's story. So basically, the Uttamadikaris, the Vaishnavas, they have the vision to see everyone in the same way. They don't discriminate. Ayam nijaha paro vakti ganana lagu chetasam udara charita nam tu vasudeva kutumbakam. Ayam nijaha, this fellow is mine, this person is so and so. No, everyone view with the same vision. So that is the goal of a Vaishnava. Now, it is, it is not possible to emulate, you know, imitate uh, such great Vaishnavas, but we can understand the, how we have to, you know, deal with people, different people. It is not that we rate everyone on the super platform, you know, first platform number one. No, we have to have the ability to discriminate who is an Uttam Adhikari, who is a Madhyam Adhikari, who is a Kanishta Adhikari. But the common ground is that compassion for everyone. Hmm? Everyone you know, will view with the same love and regard. That is the common basis. Hare Krishna. Anybody has any questions or comments? Feel free to make.